Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And we are coming back around with our Sex in the City episodes. So excited. And you know what, Annie? Yes. What? We are hitting year 25 for Sex in the City. That is the anniversary. A quarter of a city. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just had a moment. It's going to be okay, Smith. <laughs> oh, that, I just had a, an existential crisis right there. But oh. A quarter of a century for the beloved series of Sex in the City. And I believe things are happening. They're going to have a whole special HBO, you know. We also know that in the upcoming season of Just Like That, we're going to have a Samantha cameo, but BT dubs, that doesn't mean they're okay. They are not no, okay. <laughs> it does not mean that at all. <laughs> um, and just an FYI, if you hear something funky on my end, this is what happens when you are at a home studio and not very technologically savvy. But I'm sure Christina has probably fixed it. So hopefully it doesn't matter anyway. Because she is a magician, we know this. She is a pro. Um, Ghost but, in the system. <laughs> yes, but if that's what, if you hear something funky, it is coming from my setup. I have to figure this out because it's driving me crazy just seeing it. <laughs> anyway, but back to we are back with our happy hour edition. Annie, are you sipping on anything? I am. Uh, I was thinking about this. I am sipping on a gin and tonic. Oh. Which used to be my go-to. And I was like, why have I not made one in so long? It's because my refrigerator hasn't worked in so long. Correct. That's why. Because I was like, oh, the ice. Oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> I now it. have a, a working refrigerator. It is really hot in my apartment right now. And it's a Friday as we're recording this. And I was like, you know what? I've been missing the old G and T. Old G and T. Yes, as they call it. As yes, they call it. As they should. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we are not sponsored by anything that we mention. Uh, we are sponsored by things, but none, none of the things that we're mentioning at this point. I am sticking to my bubbly water because I am frustrated with what is happening behind. <laughs> the curtains, y'all. Just kidding. Um, but yes, I am drinking my bubbly water, strawberry flavored. Oh, because you're you're taking yeah. care of the pineapple. Yeah, I'm like it's milking it essentially, like just mm -hmm. gently using it. Um, <laughs> That's <laughs> gross. You're welcome. <laughs> you um, but yes, if you are also partaking of things, whatever you are doing, do it responsibly and in good health um, and in good consciousness. I feel like we could add that to there, you know, just because it's 2023. We should add good consciousness to everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> anyway, yes, we are on, I believe, episode 15 of season two. And the title of it is Shortcomings. But before we get to there, Annie, can you give us a refresher of what has been happening just in season two? I won't go make you go all the way back. Oh my gosh. These would get comically longer and longer and still <laughs> very vague. Just like <laughs> random facts. Um, I will say I'm kind of starting at the midpoint because I feel like that the season started with a breakup and then in mid-season we had another breakup. Carrie and Mr. Big broke up. Steve and Miranda broke up. Uh, Charlotte continues to date people who seem to last only one episode in her search for the, the one we, in our previous episode, we talked a lot about f buddies, and that resulted in a breakup as well. <laughs> so, a lot of breakups happening. As always, so much discussion about uh, dating and awkwardness and just how strange relationships can be. And there was a cameo by John Bon Jovi. Um, that's the end. <laughs> Who she did not know, y'all. No. <laughs> okay, well, as we mentioned before, this episode is titled Shortcomings. Do you give us a what you think this episode is about? Okay, so as I said, I had, I feel like I had kind of a, a breakthrough in how I understand <laughs> these titles. I... Uh, <laughs> I oh. wonder if it's going to be something about dating someone short dating someone who orgasms really quickly um 
<laughs> I don't know what shortcomings. See, it's it's only it only makes sense to me after in hindsight. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. That's all I got. Okay. That's all. That's it. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll see. We will. I guess we'll we will. See. All <laughs> yes. right. Here we go. For Miranda, it was family hour at her gym. Children running around within a weight room? Yeah, not cool. that's not smart. Not that's cool. not smart. <laughs> and do gyms do this? Do they have family hours? I don't think so. I know like the LA Fitness that I go to, not a sponsor, don't, not a great company. Don't, don't mind me, but they're cheap. <laughs> they have a whole little like uh, children's area. So that's closed off and an employee works there sometimes to babysit. Complimentary babysitting. I mean, that's nice. Not the running about. Right. That doesn't seem right. Also, the one thing that Sex in the City does is make you not want to have children. <laughs> that's true. There have been several episodes around yeah. that, actually. We've got this bratty kid who touches all the buttons. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it when it was coming out, I'm sure it was kind of revolutionary that here are these four women that were like, yeah. No, I don't want kids. <laughs> yeah, 30s, not sure. Oh, yeah. Because I guess they did have kids eventually, but it wasn't about that. You know, and I know a lot of people, for them, dating a single parent is difficult. Mm-hmm. That's a definitely big question about whether or not it's something that you would want to do or you're uh, equipped to do. Because that comes with typically step parents or uh baby mamas, daddies, baby daddies, all those things, Mm -hmm. and then extra in-laws that you might have to deal with. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've had people write in on the other side of, like, I have trouble finding someone to date as a single parent. Yeah. (laughs) So it's such a hard thing. It's a hard line. Mm Mm-hmm. His name was Roger Cobb, and it only took him another floor and a half to ask Miranda for her phone number. Oh, but here we go. Miranda's... It's not a no for Miranda here. (laughs) what I think. Mm-hmm. Round up all the divorced men and keep them in a pound. <laughs> Once That's again, they are not fans of children here. <laughs> no. Just because a man is divorced doesn't mean he has a problem. Like my brother Wesley. He's just separated from his wife, Leslie, and he's... It... Wesley and Leslie? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what is that? Marriage by Mother Goose? <laughs> Definitely a candidate for the pound. Mm. Okay. I've had a few friends who had, like, matching similar names or almost the exact same names. Yeah. I do know a couple named... Eric and Erica, which oh, I thought was funny. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you can't help who you who you fall in love with. Oh, yeah. I had a, a boyfriend who would joke that he wanted to take my last name because I guess he was named after a character from Terminator 2. Oh. And his name was Kyle. And Kyle, the character's oh. name is Kyle Reese, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just love, love, love your column. Oh, well, I love, love, love to hear that. <laughs> Mom, uh, we can't stay. The hell you can't. You know what you should write about? Re-virginization. Re-virginization. Did you know that there are women who are actually having their vaginas re-stitched to make them like new again? Which is funny because well, that is a thing, and it's it been is. around for a while. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Women yeah. have, you know, after having babies, going back, I'm like, why would you do that to yourself? I actually met... A friend's parents, I wasn't dating, but who she she automatically came up to me and was talking about something like re I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> the cool parents. Yeah, the, the cool, cool parents. parents who, who like, you know, talk to you like an adult and just get mm-hmm. really deep really quickly. And you're like, what's mm-hmm. happening? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know I was allowed to talk about this with a random yeah. adult stranger. <laughs> right. So, have uh, you ever gone out with someone who had a kid? No, but I've never gone out with someone I met on an elevator either. So. Well, that's the first for me too. So now she's met, eating uh, with the family. We got the we got the date with a single parent. I dated a man once who wore ladies' lingerie. That was kind of the problem there. 
I'm kidding. Because <laughs> I'm wearing panties now. You're kidding, right? Yeah. Ow! Oh. Daddy, look what I found. What kid you say you're sorry? No. is allowed to hit no. No. people no. with a giant stick? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, that, that he's acting like it's so normal. Can right. you say you're sorry? <laughs> it must be hard. Also, that sounds like a hard smack. And she it seems did. okay. Like yeah. I mean, within an uh, hour, the situation could change. <laughs> <laughs> also, this kid is now roaming around Central Park yeah. with no supervision. Yeah. The social services worker here is, like, dying. <laughs> so concerned right now. Murders have happened there, sir. Murder. <laughs> Some men seduce with dim lights and soft music. Vaughn seduced with chocolate chip cookies and relatives. It was inevitable this would happen. I just didn't know it would happen so quickly. You're not wrong, Annie. Yes! <laughs> That's why I didn't yes! react. You you can you do you scored pretty high on this one. Good job. Yay! It's, I'm learning. <laughs> you are. I didn't think you because your your mind mindset doesn't typically yeah, go yeah, sexual. I know even with this, so I didn't think you would get that. To be honest. <laughs> well, I have read a lot of the fan fiction. So. <laughs> and we just spent the whole day with his family. Look. The guy cannot get his Cadillac into the garage. Honey, I'm sorry. I Cadillac right into the garage. That's such an aged expression. I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> I've heard like automobiles in general, but mm -hmm. I feel like the, the uh, brand and or the type <laughs> dates you. So right. no, nowadays it should be like Tesla, right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do Teslas even go in garages? I don't know. <laughs> I would hope so. They get damaged a lot from what I see on TikTok because people mm. don't like Tesla, so they scratch them up, it seems. Oh, wow. When you date someone, how many people become emotionally involved? When you sleep with someone, are you screwing the family? When you screw a person, do you screw oh, their family? Right. I mean, we, I've had so many friends who have put off breaking up with someone because they love their family. Yes. People attach to my family. So my younger brother, who's a little bit older than me, every time he broke up with someone, the girls would be so upset because they loved my parents. We had several that were really attached to my parents. Um, yeah. I will say my current partner's family is wonderful. Love them. Mm -hmm. And I love spending time with them. So I'm like, it, it would be like, it would be sad because I would be like, oh, I would want yeah. to remain friends, but you couldn't. Yeah. It's also kind of odd because it's, I overheard one of my exes, not overheard, she, she kind of said it near me. She, it wasn't like I was like eavesdropping, but she was talking about how much she liked one of my ex's exes. And so it, I, I have hope that it's not like they're talking trash about me because right. I did like them too. Right. Um, but it's also just sort of the way of. The way the cookie crumbles right, for a date that's the, expression. <laughs> that's the way, because like that would be a big key of like, I don't want them to think bad of me. Right. It is sad and it does suck, but I'm hoping that they would at least not be <laughs> wildly worst, trashing yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have your son Slinky embedded in my back. So I think this is like the third date rule for them. The third date they have sex. Oh, okay. Because obviously for a show that's only 30 minutes long, you got to get it in there. <laughs> Samantha! It's sex in the city. Come on. <laughs> the Cadillac needs to get into the garage. <laughs> Annie. As, as they Daddy. say. No! Simon, <laughs> Locking of the doors. Important. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was peeing and I didn't want him to see me. I was afraid he'd see me and the next thing you know, he'd be drawing pictures for a child psychologist and then nobody's happy, right? I'll get a Band-Aid, huh? He's hurt. I think he might need a stitch. Well, I'll go with you to the emergency room. No! Oh. Just go. Please. 
It is, this would be like an interesting twist if you see it from his point of view yeah. and she's like the evil families. woman trying to steal his dad right. or something that we right. often see that trope. That's also mean and never smiles right. at him. <laughs> right. That is so sexy. You in bed with my book. I think this is just me, but like, really... as we have a book coming out, having someone read it in front of me would make me nervous. Oh, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I'd, I'd be like, I've got to leave now. Yeah. If it, even if it was my place, I'd be like, goodbye. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> I'm go. I'm moving. <laughs> it's just, so like, for him, it's sexy. For me, it's like, ah. <laughs> Don't tell me. Never speak to me again. <laughs> Why is he so edgy? I have no idea. Don't let him pull that moody I know, it's such a pose. The minute he got published, he suddenly this quote, tortured artist. Where's the cream cheese? It's out there. Now, now I'm wondering if my family's ever had a conversation like this with anyone I've dated. I will say I'll have a conversation about my partner with his family, for sure. <laughs> so yes. I've had that. And, but it's all, I, like, jesting. Like, it wouldn't right, be like, for legitimate, like, like... Affectionate, kind of, yeah. Yeah. So your sex life isn't so great. So what? 77% of all marriages are sexless. The other things are so much more important. 77%? Like, is that true? Family. I don't in think the, so. In the late I, 90s? I, I, I don't think I really that's true. Well, I mean, in the late 90s, not marriage was not ideal necessarily. Like, it kind of was back into that old traditional ideal of marriage and women and well, house roles. But and that was the prime time for all the jokes with the, in the men, the sitcom, and how they never get sex. It's true, but I feel like... We have sexless implies like it, there's never any sex. Maybe maybe there's like not a lot of sex, mm -hmm. but I feel like for a lot of marriages, that sex is something you want in it, or at least one partner wants in it. I feel like seventy-seven percent. That's really high. That's yeah. There are days you love them and others you don't, but in the end, they're the people you always come home to. Sometimes it's the family you're born into, and sometimes it's the one you make for yourself. Yes, your chosen family. I do love that, that they, this dynamic, which has been kind of shattered, obviously, but the, the four of them are best friends and choose each other and see each other as often. I always love that, the camaraderie. Yeah. Love it. And yeah. that it ends with that note just makes me happy. Yeah. That's definitely, I think, the, the heart and the highlight of the show. Yes. Okay, Annie, I will give you a B plus yes. for this episode. Uh, I'm not giving you an A because you just, you copped out on the rest of the <laughs> cast and crew. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you, you hit better than I thought you would. So today you get a B plus. Congratulations. I, I'm going to print a certificate. <laughs> Shortcomings will be written on it. Um, <laughs> it'll be fantastic. I was going to say, are you really proud of that? Do you really want that to be known? Um, I am. <laughs> but yes, so this, I, I always laugh at the, about this uh, episode because of the uh, whole boyfriend and the parents and the family thing. Because it it's fairly relatable in how much they love Carrie and then how dismissive they are of the son. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's like, I feel like that's a, a dynamic many of us have experienced where you become like the new girlfriend and it's sort of the, they want it to work out and right. they're kind of putting on their like, no, we can, we can talk about it or don't let him get, don't let him do this and don't right. let him, like they're trying, it's like they're almost interviewing 
<laughs> it's almost like a job interview or something right. where they're like, no, it's great. He's great. He's great. But don't let this, don't let this, don't let right, this. Right, right. Let me tell you, do this, do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it's important to have that relationship. It, it would be nice to have. Not everyone has it, obviously. But mm-hmm. we know that's a whole stereotype as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, good job, Annie. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of basking in, in like pride right now. As you should be. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yes. We'll see if you can keep this streak up. No. In no, all 50 no. of episodes of the season. Just kidding. That would be like a huge scandal if it, it turned out that you found out I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> like the pressure gets to be too much, I and I start. <laughs> I, to be fair, I probably would <laughs> if it was turned around. Because you know, I'm also this person that needs a heads up on things. Yeah, I love spoilers. I've said this before. Like mm-hmm. uh, one of the things right now that's happening on TikTok for my K dramas, because there's some really just most of the K dramas have a like at least a small subplot that's fairly tragic. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it's a romance or not. Like kidnappings mm-hmm. and and deaths and all these things. So I'm like, oh my god. So TikTok has been doing, people will put up like different scenes and different like parts and give you an update. I'm like, I love this. So I can choose and know if I want to watch it or not by right. by watching these little parts, even though it's spoilers for most people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. so I'll probably would cheat a little bit. Especially knowing <laughs> these episodes are so awkward sometimes. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you my truth. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm here for you and I accept your truth. <laughs> okay, we didn't see Charlotte in a relationship on this one. She was just trying to fix her brother. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's sort of that's an interesting at least for me it was interesting to see cuz I've never I have never had brothers I have two brothers, uh, date within my friend group. Um, they've dated people who are sort of like on my outer periphery because we're four years apart um, both ways. I have had opinions about people they are dating, but mostly I've kept them to myself because mostly if, it, if there was something really harmful going on, I would say something. But <laughs> just kind of that like protective sister bit where you're not really listening to the brother mm-hmm. um, and kind of uh, projecting your own beliefs and thoughts and fears onto someone else without taking into account uh, what they want. Cause Charlotte does want this like marriage and she right. does want like this, you know, kind of quote traditional fairy tale yep. family wedding. And so when it wasn't working for her brother, she kept being like, no, you got to fix it. You got to fix it. Um, and hurting her friend in the process because it was really more of just her. And I feel like I've never done something like this, but I am very protective of my brothers, so I can kind of see it where you're just so like, yeah, oh, no, you're going to get hurt. But sometimes that opposite. becomes about you. <laughs> yeah, I do the opposite. I was more worried about the girls that they would date That's, than I yeah. was about my brother. That's fair, too. Because they would tell me, like the younger one, would tell me things that I'm like, why are you telling me this? Mm-hmm. And, and like how they treat girls sometimes. I'm like, you are awful. Why are you doing yeah. this? Yeah. My brother's never told me that. But if they if they had been like, because I like, I've most everyone they've dated, I've liked. Um, so I would never be throwing them under the bus or something. Right. I mean, again, I think he was showing off. Oh, mm-hmm. so it wasn't necessarily all true. And I don't know right. why he would try to brag things to me. I'm not sure if it was for shock factor or whatever, but I'm like, why would you say this? Yeah. It's weird. It is. It is strange. And that's sort of the <laughs> what we were talking about, too, with the, you know, when you meet the family. It can be odd to know. And it sounds so cold, but it can be odd to think in the back of your head, like, I wonder... How long will this person be around? Right. <laughs> and you're like, you know, trying to be polite and, you know, like genuinely, I, I would try to just talk with them, get to know them a little, uh, but not too much because I feel like you can come on too hard. And I'm kind of like, I, if you want to talk to me, we can, but otherwise I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happened with a chunk of people that be my, because again, my sister started bringing home boys at 16, 15. 
my brother started bringing home girls 17 and then my other brother 15 so mm-hmm. people, girls and, and men would come through not young boys and they were very cute but i'm like i don't care about you yeah <laughs> we'll see how long this right, goes right. Isn't it? <laughs> until they got I'll married t- then i'm like okay cool um, right <laughs> but then they, they cross the line i'm like yeah don't want to talk to you right yeah yeah it's an odd experience mm-hmm. um of just it's it's stressful too like being the new person meeting the family of <sighs> to make a good impression <laughs> like <laughs> am I gonna ruin it all right here right now oh it was I felt like that's a big deal because I held off for a very long time for my partner to meet my family and me to meet his family for like three years I think um part mm-hmm. of that was due to COVID uh mm-hmm. so we didn't go travel anywhere so that was a couple, a couple of years into that but like yeah I because I did because my family does get attached mm-hmm. to people and I right I was like, no, I'm not. If this doesn't last, I do not want to hear. Where's so and so? How is? Yeah. How are they doing? Which happens with just friends right. that they met one time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why? My mom still asks about my exes, and it it cracks me up. They're yes. like, I don't know. Well, why would you think I know? <laughs> That's not anymore. I don't know. <laughs> they don't exist to me. Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I just, I also want to say. Two, that I do think Carrie tried to talk once again. She tried to have a conversation about a thing. And he shut it down so quickly. And, it, it, you know, you can kind of understand why, given his, his family. But it was sort of like that. I feel like I've encountered that, too, with men of this, like, extreme defensiveness, which a lot of it is, like, socialization and stuff around any perceived uh, not great I don't know, not being great in bed or something. <laughs> like, won't even hear it, won't talk right. about it. So, I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what yeah. happens if you don't talk about it? Your mom gets involved. <laughs> no! <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Well, we're moving right along, everybody. We're moving right along. Uh, so, cheers. 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 Yes. Uh we will be announcing who will be joining us soon. And yeah, it's going to be so fun. I'm very much looking forward to it. And yeah, I'm going to go. I can't print. Maybe I'll draw a certificate uh, of my <laughs> success today. Uh, so <laughs> please congratulate me. <laughs> Someone congratulate her. Email please. her a certificate, please. <laughs> yes, please. Please. And if you want to mail it, to our email, you can. <laughs> <laughs> our email is stuff, media mom stuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at Mom Stuff Podcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff I'm Never Told You. You can also find us on YouTube. We have a T Public store. There's not much there yet, but we have more ideas. If you have an idea, though, there's a way we can make that happen too. And we have a book coming out. You can pre order it at stuffyoushouldreadbooks.com. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I'll Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 